Hey everyone, it's Kyle here, and this week I'm going to be teaching you how to integrate a drive straight algorithm into your acceleration program to make your robot's acceleration more controllable. About two years ago, I made a tutorial that taught you how to make an acceleration program. And it was very simple, but it accomplished its task. The robot did accelerate from a target speed to another target speed within an adjustable window of time. However, the one problem with the program is it wasn't very controllable where the robot was going because the robot would veer sometimes off to the left or to the right a little bit. and It was hard to get the robot to go straight and move consistently. So that's what I'm going to be addressing today. You may have also remembered that a while ago I made a video called uh, Drive Straight using the EV3 motor encoders, which uses the rotation sensors which in the e within the EV3 motors to adjust the robot's driving to keep it in a straight line. So in this week's video, I'm going to be taking my old acceleration program from about two years ago and integrating these Drive Straight concepts into the program to make an acceleration program that's more controllable and allows the robot to drive straight while it ramps up its power. I've got the EV3 software open now and it's time to get to work with making this program. So to start off I have my simple acceleration program which I showed in my video from roughly two years ago. And it works pretty well but remember that it's not perfectly straight because sometimes it veers off to one side. This is the exact same one that I showed in the video. As a matter of fact I even pulled up the video and followed the steps to make this program. So if we're going to do a little bit of review. Uh, remember that we set the motor starting power, in this case it's zero, and then we set that power uh, using a variable. We wait a certain amount of time, and then each time the loop goes around, it adds one to the power and it goes around until you've reached 100% power. And that's, that's how we get the acceleration, and you can control the speed of the acceleration with this weight block. Now if you want to dissect this even further, you can think of this as the motor power set speed, and then this as the increment step right here. So if you think increment step where it's increasing the power, and then motor set step where it sets the motor's power. When we combine the drive straight program, we're only going to be concerning ourselves with this first half. This increment part is going to stay the same. Because over here we're going to be adding some extra code that looks at how the degrees on each of the drive motors B and C differs and then it makes an adjustment in between them accordingly to keep the robot driving straight. The first change that we're going to need to make to this program is to put two motor reset blocks at the beginning and these are found under the sensor section this is the motor rotation block and you're going to put two just before this loop and the reason is because as I said before this drive straight program works by looking at the difference in degrees between the two drive motors. So if they already start different, then any chance of getting the robot to drive straight is out the window. So you need to make sure that both drive motors, port B and port C, are reset before the program actually starts. Now we can go inside the loop and continue making changes to our program. We're going to need more motor rotation blocks, and this time we're going to be reading the number of degrees on the drive motors, B and C. So you see they're by default set to measure degrees, so that's fine. And just make sure the ports match. We're going to go over into the math section and take out two math blocks, and we're going to put one after each one. And we're going to use a feature that I don't think we've used on this channel before. So instead of using a regular math operation, we're going to be using absolute value for both of these. And we're going to take the absolute value of the number of degrees on each motor. And this step is because we're not really concerned with whether the robot's driving in the positive or the negative direction. We just want to see the difference in between the two degree values. This also comes in handy because later, as you'll see, I'm designing this program specifically so that if your robot drives forward on a negative power, as does my robot Sirius, it makes this much easier to switch between the two. So anyway, we're going to continue on. After we've taken the absolute value of each motor degree value, we need to find the difference in between the two. So take out yet another math block and set that to subtract. And take the result from each. Take the result from motor B and make that A. And take the result from motor C and make that B. And it's very important that it's motor B minus motor C, not the other way around. Otherwise, your robot will be making corrections in the wrong direction. We need yet another math block after that, and this time we're going to set this to multiply. 
We take the result from this math block, which is the difference in between the two motor degree values, and set that as the first input. And then the second info input is going to be our k value. As you recall, if you've watched my proportional line follower video, or wall follower, or whatever, a k value is that scaling value that you multiply an adjustment by, and this allows you to adjust the uh, intensity or the magnitude of the adjustments that your robot makes. This is an arbitrary value, meaning that I can't tell you what it's going to be. This is something that you're going to have to measure specifically yourself because it's different for each robot. But for Sirius, I found that a K value of 0.6 works best. And I'll teach you how to adjust the K values at the end after we complete this program. We're going to keep chugging along with this program, but now this is the part where things might start to get a little bit hectic because we're going to be doing a lot of different things with data wires. See right here how in the previous program we had power and whatever the number was it went directly in as the power for our drive motors left and right. This is going to change with our new program because instead of directly reading the value of this variable we're going to have another adjustment step in between this and this. So I remove the data wires from here and we're going to program that extra adjustment step. Instead of thinking this as the set power you could think of this as the base power off of which the adjustments will be made. So the motor is going to set this power, say it's about 35 percent, and then after that based on these degree values that we measured earlier, this is going to calculate the adjustment that it needs to make to each of the drive motors in order to get it to stay at, at that power level and keep driving straight. So let's start uh, making this adjustment step. We're going to need some more math blocks. Surprise! There's a lot of math in this program. We're going to drag out two directly after this power block. The first one we're going to set to subtract, and the second one is set to add by default, which is OK. So we're going to be taking the results, or actually rather, we should take the value, this base power level, and we're going to put that as the input for both of these. OK? So there's one, and there's two. So the result of this final math block here is the adjustment that we're going to be making to the base power. So now we need to apply that. So we're going to take this result and plug it into the B value or the second input of both of these math blocks that we put out to make the adjustment to the power. See, notice that one of them is going to be subtracting the adjustment from the base power and the other adds the adjustment to the base power. Finally, we get to assign each of these adjusted power values to a wheel. So we take the result of the subtraction side and make that as the power level for motor B. And we're going to take the result of the addition side and make that the resulting power for motor C. And it's very important that the subtracted side is motor B and the addition side is motor C. Now this might seem kind of weird. Why is it that we're always subtracting the adjustment from motor B and we're always adding the adjustment to motor C? Isn't that always going to make the robot veer off to the left since motor B's power is going to be smaller? Well, not exactly. It just so happens that it's set up so it, when it takes the difference between the two, if motor B is uh, progressing faster than motor C, if it's spinning faster, that means you're going to have a positive difference and we're going to multiply this by our K value and we're going to get a positive adjustment. So what happens when we get here is we subtract a positive number to, to get motors B powers, motor B's power, which now becomes lower, and we add that positive value to motor C's power, which is faster. So you can see how when motor B was faster, now it gives, gives us a positive difference, and that slows down motor B and speeds up motor C. However, if we go back over here, if motor C was spinning faster, when we take the difference, the difference is actually going to be negative and it's going to stay negative throughout until we get to here where we subtract a negative value from motor B's power which really is just adding a positive value and that'll speed up motor B and we're going to add a negative value which is the same as subtraction so you see how it's set up so even though we're always subtracting to motor B and always adding to motor C it always works out that we're going to make the proper adjustment because of the way we set up the difference over here now our acceleration code here is complete but I have one more really cool thing that I want to show you. And this is something that I mentioned with all of my programs. Because my robot Sirius, as you may know from watching my previous videos, drives forward when you give it a negative power. 
this code as it's set up works if your motor drives forward with positive power. So what changes do you need to make to get it to work with a robot like Sirius which drives uh, uh, forward on negative power? It turns out because we use these absolute value blocks in the beginning, the changes are very minimal. This is really cool, watch this. You only need to change two things. You need to go over here to this multiplication step. This is your uh, k value, your proportional constant. The first thing you need to do is make that negative. And then the second thing you need to do is move over here to the increment step. And instead of add, you need to change this to subtract. And that is the only two changes you need to get this to work with a robot that moves forward with negative power. And it's very convenient because we use those absolute value blocks. Pretty cool, right? Here's what the original program looks like without the drive straight. You'll notice that as it drives, it kind of arcs to one side. And now here's the program that we just completed with the addition of the drive straight algorithm. You'll notice that it is much straighter. You'll also notice if you look really closely that there's a slight zigzag when it drives, which is from the robot adjusting the power between the two drive wheels to keep itself in a straight line. How do you adjust the K value? As I mentioned before, this is something that you're going to have to experimentally determine through trial and error, but I recommend that you first start with a simple value as a base, like 1, then make observations based on how the robot drives with this value, and make adjustments from there. If you notice that the robot's driving is smooth, but it still tends to careen towards one side, that means your K value is too small and you need to make it larger. If the robot's driving is not smooth, if it has too much of a zigzag, or it even violently shudders like it does here, that means the K value is too large, resulting in corrections that are too large, and you need to make the K value smaller. Keep adjusting your K value until you get your robot to drive straight and smooth, with just the tiniest amount of zigzag when it drives. Thanks for checking out my video this week. If you found it helpful, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this every week. And if you have an idea for a tutorial, leave it in the comments section below. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.